Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so we will discuss now how uh, using the demand and supply these two opposite forces how we can determine the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity in a market. Say we have to place demand curve and supply curve in the same panel same framework. So, let us let us draw that suppose we are measuring as usual quantity demanded and quantity supplied in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis. Okay. So, suppose usual case we know the law of demand, demand curve will be downward sloping and supply curve will be upward sloping, we have already discussed that. Yes, there is an exception for the demand curve, sometimes demand curve can be upward sloping, in which case we have told that if commodity is given good, price and quantity consumption that relationship positively related. right? So, if there is a given good for a customer, okay, then individual demand curve may be positively sloped or upward sloping. Right? So, let us start first that usual case where demand curve is downward sloping and supply curve is upward sloping. So, suppose this is the demand curve say denoted by A B and say suppose this red color is the supply curve denoted by C D. Right? So, what is the equilibrium? equilibrium you know that demand and supply these are the two opposite forces. So, equilibrium we will attain where these two opposite forces are matching each other exactly. So, of course, where we need so equilibrium in this kind of framework equilibrium will have two components equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Okay. So, when we are talking about equilibrium say suppose so many alternative possible prices we can think of this price level that price level that price level so many alternative price level we can think of. So, for equilibrium price we are searching for that price level at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied is exactly same. Okay. So, what is that price level definitely where the two cars are cutting each other. So, that price level this is the price level at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied is exactly equal. In that case, this is the both quantity demanded as well as quantity supplied. Right? This, these two A, B and C, D that market demand curve and market supply curve not the individual demand curve and individual supply curve. Right? These are market demand curve and market supply curve to determine the equilibrium price in the market. Right? Okay. Now, why this is an equilibrium we can think of a different way. Suppose, if okay, let me let me draw the diagram a phrase. Suppose A B is the demand curve, say C D is the supply curve, okay, and as we told that this is the equilibrium price. Suppose I am denoting that P star O is the origin. So, O P star is our equilibrium O P star is equilibrium P R I U M equilibrium price. Okay. Now, suppose why this is equilibrium price we are trying to understand that a little bit different way. right? So, suppose we, let us take uh, one price level which is above this price say suppose at this price level. This price level what is there? So, look at here at this price level this much quantity demanded is there in the market because this is the demand curve AB is the demand curve. Okay. So, A B curve market demand curve A B is telling that if price level is say suppose this is O P 1, if price level is O P 1 that time this much is the quantity demanded of that product in the market and this much is the quantity supplied in that, pro that product of that in that market. 
Okay. So, obviously quantity supplied is more than quantity demanded. So, what will happen? What is the natural economic force? You, you, you ask yourself right in a market for a commodity where lot of customers are there, lot of sellers are there and it is such that the amount of product what is available which sellers are willing to sell in the product, customers are not willing to purchase that much quantity. That is the situation here, right? Quantity supplied is way above than quantity demanded. So, what will happen? Natural market force will make the price to come down, right? Because lot of quantities are available, but not enough customers are available to purchase them. So, definitely perhaps uh, sellers will try to reduce little bit price. Okay. Customers also perhaps will not give that much price, uh, will not be willing to give that much price, right. So, as a result price will have a tendency to come down, okay. exactly the opposite scenario suppose this is the price level, say OP2 is the price level. If that is the case, what is the quantity demanded? This much commodity, right? This much quantity of that commodity is demanded by the customers in the market, but only this much is available in that market. So, what will happen? Demand for that commodity in the market is way above than the supply of that market. What will happen? Perhaps sellers will try to increase the price because sellers know that lot of customers are available, they are willing to purchase the product. Okay. So, even if we increase the price little bit, they will purchase because they need that commodity. right? So, there will be a tendency to price to go up. Look at here when I am telling that at any alternative price other than the OP star price, right? in one cases price level has a tendency to go down, another case price level has a tendency to go up, who is making that? In the silently this demand supply forces are uh, silently operating their actions or their activities. Okay. And as a result accordingly the customers and sellers are adjusting their behavior. Through that adjustment price is moving in the certain directions depending on the situation. Right? So, that is why again you can understand why market is called invisible hand. Nobody can observe from outside that how it is happening, how that price is moving one direction and another direction depending on the situation. Right? So, the, when we are discussing that price level is actually below the equilibrium price level, we are telling that perhaps sellers will try to increase the price little bit. Do you think that it is always seller will try to increase the price? No. Sometimes situation can happen that customers also bargain among themselves to increase the price. How? Okay. Let, let uh, give an example. We told that in the South India, no, there is a there is an essential festival. One festival it's called Pongal. Pongal, Pongal. Okay. There is a festival. One uh, is uh, so there are such certain rituals related to are attached to that uh, festival. So. One sugar cane, full sugar cane is one essential part of that ritual. Okay. So, demand for sugar cane will be every family uh, that day need at least one sugar cane. Right? Now, suppose nearby market right, say only uh, 100 quantity of sugar cane is available whether 150 people are there, 150 potential customers are there, each of them want to purchase one sugar cane. So, what will happen? You know that that day sugar cane is very important, that is an almost a co essential commodity that day. You have to purchase one. What will do? Perhaps uh, I know that that sugar cane the customer or sellers are ready to sell that one piece sugar cane may be 20 rupee. Okay. Realizing that lot of customers are there and it is so important that day, perhaps I will go and tell no, 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 I am giving 25 rupee, you give me because there is a long queue. Okay, people are queuing to get that product. right? So, here actually customers themselves are bargaining. You can see in your rural market no, when that some very important product or some precious product came, lot of customers are there, but not that much su supply. So, suppose you are willing, you are one potential customer, you are trying to bargain a little bit, you are trying going to or trying to ask the cust uh, seller that can you re reduce price little bit, you will see that another customer beside no, 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 I am giving this much price you give me, right. 
So, what is happening there? They are essentially it is happening that customers are bargaining among themselves silently to increase the price. Okay. So, does not matter whether producers or sellers are increasing the price or customers are indirectly bargaining among themselves to increase the price. In any case, price is moving a certain direction. Okay. So, that is the thing and from that 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 point of view we can tell that O P star is the equilibrium price where quantity demanded and quantity supplied is exactly matching. So, let me discuss this thing afresh. Okay. So, we have quantity demanded, quantity supplied in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis. Say this kind of A B is the our demand curve, market demand curve, always market demand curve we are talking about this is C D our market supply curve okay. and we are telling that O is our origin O P star is the market equilibrium price and at that equilibrium price O Q star we can tell equilibrium quantity in which sense equilibrium quantity that much of commodity will be transacted in the market because that much of demand is available that much supply is available. So, all the demand will match exactly all the supply whatever is available in the market right. So, that is that equilibrium quantity. So, of course, as we told the any price above the equilibrium price we will have this much of excess supply this this is called excess supply sometimes that is called surplus also surplus. And if any price below the equilibrium price, this is called excess demand, or sometimes that is called shortage. So, all these terminologies are simply English word or English phrase, you can easily understand in which sense it is excess supply. This is excess supply because supply amount is this much and demand is only this much. So, some excess supply is there over the demand okay, that is why it is called excess supply or that is called surplus. Okay. Exactly the same way this much of supply is there, but this much of demand is there. So, demand is more than supply, so excess demand is there okay. and that excess demand is sometimes called shortage also. Shortage means because the people the, the customers the co amount of commodity they are looking for they are trying to purchase. Okay, that much supply is not available in the market. So, there is a shortage of commodity supply in the market in that sense it is shortage. Okay. Okay. So, this kind of equi this is the equilibrium this E point we are telling that equilibrium point where demand supply is matching each other exactly. Okay. This equilibrium we can tell stable equilibrium also stable equilibrium idea of stable equilibrium is not there in the book we are following, but in this context we can discuss I am sure that once we, I discuss that here all of you will be able to understand what I am referring. This equilibrium is called stable equilibrium by stability we are referring this equilibrium is so that if for some reason if market detached from that point may be something above some price level above or some below price level automatic market force will make the equilibrium price to come back to that O P star level again. Like we told when price level is at this say O P 1 level excess supply is there than demand. So, automatic market force will push the price below, below that O P 1 level. If somehow suppose this is O P 2 level price is little bit below that equilibrium price level. So, automatic market source here excess demand is there. So, automatic market force will pull down or push up uh, pull up or yeah pull up the price uh, from O P 2 level to O P star level. So, stability in the sense that for some reason if market got detached from the equilibrium situation automatic market force will make sure that price is coming back to the equilibrium level. In that sense it is called stable equilibrium as well. Now of course, one question may come to your mind can there be an equilibrium which is unstable. Okay. 
okay, yes that can be there. Okay, let us take an another example. Okay, we know that at least we told that under certain cases okay, demand curve can be upward sloping also if the commodity is uh, given good. Right? when this inferior good, given good, this kind of unusual kind of commodities we discuss, we also told that these commodities are subjective means one commodity may be given to me, but may not be given to you. right? In that suppose, suppose we are talking about in a market where major customers or major now most, most of the customers this commodity for which this is the supply car. Okay? that commodity who are the customers potential customers are available in that market majority of them uh, to majority of them this commodity is a uh, given commodity. Okay. So, what will happen? Yes, so, so, suppose, suppose 100 customers are there uh, to 90 of them this commodity is given good and remaining 10 it is ordinary good. So, to whom it is ordinary good their individual demand curve will be downward sloping but other 90 people to whom it is the given good their demand curve individual demand curve will be upward sloping. So, what will be the market demand curve in this particular market? This is the supply curve CD, this is the supply curve I am telling supply curve supply. Okay. So, definitely market demand curve I have to take the horizontal summation of all those 100 different individuals demand curve. Okay. Since overwhelming majority has the upward sloping demand curve, we can expect that, okay, we can expect that perhaps market demand curve will be also upward sloping in this market. Okay. Now, the question is market demand curve is going to be upward sloping, okay. but whether that is steeper or flatter than this demand curve. Suppose this is the market demand curve, okay. say A B is the market demand curve suppose. So, of, of course, this will be the equilibrium point E in the sense that this will be the equilibrium price and at that price this much. So, this is O P star and this is O Q star. Of course, we are measuring quantity demanded, quantity supplied in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis. right? So, so what I am telling? So, this is the O P star will be the equilibrium price and O Q star will be the equilibrium quantity of that commodity will be transacted in the market. Right. Now, let us see if price level is little bit below say price level is little bit above than equilibrium price. So, this much supply is there look at here this is the supply curve and this is the demand curve A B is the demand curve. right? So, this much supply is there and this much demand is there what will happen? Demand is more than supply what will happen? Automatic market force will pull the price even further demand is more than supply excess demand is there or some shortage is there of the commodity supply right definitely price will increase. So, and suppose this is the case this is a price level which is below the equilibrium price level at that price level this much demand is there this much supply is there. So, what will happen supply is more than demand. So, what will happen? definitely more lot of uh, quantity supplied is there in the market. So, perhaps automatic market force will push uh, pull the price level even further down. right? So, we are reaching in a peculiar situation. What is the what is the peculiarity? Yes, O P star is the equilibrium price level, E is the equilibrium point, but if for some reason we get detached out of this E point away from that E point automatic market force will make the price level market price level further and further away from, from P star. Okay. So, this kind of equilibrium sometimes called unstable equilibrium. Now, it will be clear to everybody that in which sense it is unstable. Stable equilibrium automatic market force if somehow you are or uh, market is away from the equilibrium level automatic market force will push the market again towards the equilibrium level or push the market price to the towards the equilibrium price level that kind of price 
uh, equilibrium or uh, that kind of equilibrium will be called stable equilibrium. Here it is happening just the opposite. Yes, at the point E you are reaching equilibrium, their demand and supply is matching each other, but for some reason if you are little bit away or market is little bit away from that OP star equilibrium price, then automatic market force will make the price level further and further away. Does not matter whether that little bit away you are above the equilibrium price level or below the equilibrium price level. If you are below in the price level, automatic market force will make the price level even further below, even further below. And similarly, if you are above, it will make even above, even further above, further above like that. Now, the question is of course, we can ask ourselves is it the case always that when for the unstable equilibrium that demand curve or when demand curve is upward sloping equilibrium will be always unstable? Answer is no. Look at here in this particular case demand curve is upward sloping, okay? but demand curve is flatter than the supply curve. If we can see the opposite situation say demand curve is upward sloping, but demand curve is steeper than the supply curve. The quantity demanded, quantity supplied are measured in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis. Suppose this is the supply curve, I am writing just S, and this is the demand curve. Okay. Look what we are doing in this kind of the supply curve, we are making as it is usual, positively sloped. Okay. But demand curve, we are make, making usual case downward sloping, unusual case upward sloping. Now, the question is when upward sloping demand curve without violating the supply curve's usual nature, upward sloping demand curve can be of two types, either demand curve is steeper than supply curve or flatter than the supply curve. We have discussed when demand curve is flatter than the supply curve, we will reach an equilibrium, but that is very unstable equilibrium. Okay, that kind of equilibrium in economics literature, advanced level uh, development economics literature sometimes called knife edge equilibrium kind of thing. Knife edge, you know one knife, its edge very sharp, right? very thin kind of point equilibrium. And if you detach from that, no, it is very difficult to get back there again. So, that kind of unstable kind of equilibrium, but knife, knife edge equilibrium or razor edge equilibrium that, that kind of equilibrium is in some completely different kind of context, you need not bother about that. For the time being you know that it is called unstable equilibrium, in which sense it is unstable you understand. If you detach from, let me repeat again, if you detach from the equilibrium, automatic market force will not help you come back to the equilibrium again, rather that will make you further and further away from the equilibrium. Now, the other case, yes demand curve is upward sloping, but demand curve is steeper than the supply curve. So, this will be the equilibrium in this particular case, this will be the equilibrium price say suppose O p star and this will be the equilibrium quantity O q star, right. Now, suppose for some reason market price is away from O p star say above, there that price say that is O p 1 suppose, at that price what is the demand and what is the supply you look at? this is the quantity demanded and this is the quantity supplied. So, quantity supply is more than quantity demand. So, what will happen? Automatic market force definitely will pull down the price. So, you will come back this side exactly opposite here. This is the quantity demanded and this is the quantity supplied. Look at the which is the supply curve and which is the demand curve. In this particular case quantity demanded is more than quantity supplied. So, demand is more excess demand is there okay, or shortage of the commodity is there. So, definitely price level will have a tendency to go up. So, you will come back to the equilibrium. So, yes when in an unusual case when demand curve is also upward sloping that time still you can get the, so definitely this equilibrium in this particular case what we are getting it is definitely a stable equilibrium, right. Because if you are detached from the equilibrium market forces, market force, market demand supply force is pushing you back to the equilibrium level again, right. So, in that sense it is stable equilibrium. So, let me summarize usual case when demand curve is downward sloping, supply curve is upward sloping you will get an equilibrium and that equilibrium will be stable equilibrium. When we are defining that to be a stable equilibrium, 
नेचुरल क्वेश्चन में कम टू योर माइंड कैन देर बी एन इक्विलिब्रियम हुई इज अनस्टेबल क्वेश्चन इज येस देर मे बी एन इक्विलिब्रियम हुई इज अनस्टेबल वेन दैट कैन हैपन अफकोर्स दैट डिमांड कार्ड शुड बी अनयूजुअल द कांड ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सोफार वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वी आर नॉट वायोलेटिंग द सप्लाई कार्ड नेचर इट इज यूजुअल अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग बट डिमांड कार्ड फॉर द वेयर मेजोरिटी ऑफ द कस्टमर्स द कमोडिटी हुज डिमांड कार्ड वी आर डिस्कसिंग इफ मेजोरिटी ऑफ द कस्टमर टू मेजोरिटी ऑफ दोज कस्टमर्स इन द मार्केट दिस कमोडिटी इज अ गिफ एंड गुड मे बी डिमांड कार्ड विज अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग सो डिमांड कार्ड विज अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग इविन दैट केस इक्विलिब्रियम कैन बी स्टेबल इक्विलिब्रियम कैन बी अनस्टेबल सो अनस्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द इक्विलिब्रियम उल कम इन टू द पिक्चर ओनली वेन डिमांड कार्ड विज अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग नॉट ओनली दैट अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग डिमांड कार्ड इज मोर फ्लैट आर फ्लैट मोर फ्लैट आर दैन दि अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग सप्लाई कार्ड इन दैट केस इक्विलिब्रियम उल बी अनस्टेबल अल्टरनेटिवली इफ डिमांड कार्ड इज अपवर्ड स्लोपिंग बाट डिमांड कार्ड इज स्टीपार दैन द सप्लाई कार्ड देन स्टेबल उल इक्विलिब्रियम उल बी स्टील स्टेबल नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज द रियल लाइफ इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस डिमांड सप्लाई थिंग सो यूजिंग दिस डिमांड कार्ड सप्लाई कार्ड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड हाउ द इक्विलिब्रियम प्राइस इज डिटार्मिन इन अ मार्केट इन अ मार्केट फॉर एनी कमोडिटी और एनी सर्विस एंड एट दैट प्राइस लेवल व्हाट विल बी द इक्विलिब्रियम क्वान्टिटी ऑफ दैट कमोडिटी और दैट सार्विस दैट विल बी ट्रांजेक्टेड इन द मार्केट ओके नाउ इन रियल लाइफ इफ समथिंग हैपेन्स सेटर इज पेरिवास व्हाट आर द फैक्टर्स नो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑल दिस थिंग्स अंडर द सेटर इज पेरिवास कंडीशन वेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग दिस डिमांड कार्ड इन सप्लाई कार्ड वी आर जस्ट लुकिंग एट बिटवीन प्राइस एंड क्वान्टिटी डिमांड एट क्वान्टिटी सप्लाई एट दैट रिलेशनशिप सो वी आर एज्यूमिंग दैट व्हाट आर द अदर फोर्सेज दैट कैन डिटार्मिन डिमांड व्हाट आर द अदर फोर्सेज दैट कैन डिटार्मिन सप्लाई दोज आर हेल्ड फिक्सड एट साम लेवल so that is the meaning of the setter is previous condition right now suppose something happens in those factors okay some real life situation something happens say due to that what will be the implication on equilibrium price equilibrium quantity that we are going to discuss now uh, quickly say suppose today whatever is the usual weather tomorrow it is becoming very hot and we are talking about when we are talking about tomorrow is very hot it's vis a vis what is the usual climatic condition or expected climatic condition of expected heat uh, this atmospheric heat we are uh, we are used to or we, we are expecting to get right vis a vis suddenly very hot weather came right and suppose the commodity whose quantity demanded quantity supplied whose demand curve whose supply curve we are talking about that commodity is ice cream or that commodity is a cold drinks so what will happen under the setter is peribas condition okay your supply curve whatever was there it will be there so this was the supply curve demand curve perhaps earlier it was d1 now it will be d2 not necessarily it will be parallelly shifted upward i told that shift it will some shift will happen but it may be parallel it may not be parallel so what will happen why it is outward shifting you can understand because of sudden cold wave and this commodity who's talking so quantity demanded quantity supplied as usual we are measuring in the horizontal axis price we are measuring in the vertical axis okay so what will happen so we can talk about at this price level earlier market demand for that ice cream was this much due to sudden heat wave market demand for that commodity at the same price is way above than what was earlier Okay, demand for that particular commodity because it is a ice cream or it is a cold drink kind of commodity. That commodity demand suddenly increases. So, if our target is to capture, depending on some sudden change in in the surrounding in the atmosphere, what kind of effect will be there on our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantities? How we have to proceed? First, depending on the sudden change. what we are expecting that certain that change factor whether that can, that will be affecting demand or that will be affecting supply or both first we have to identify that then what we have to do suppose it is going to affect demand like this demand curve is shifting somewhere okay upward or downward whatever it is okay in this particular case it is shifting outward rightward it is shifting 
ok right order because it is shifting right side. So, I am telling right word shifting ok right word ok. So, first if it is a right word the question is uh, first question is out of the demand curve and supply curve which will shift. Second question is depending on the nature of the change in the atmosphere or change in the surrounding factors which side it will shift ok. And then the third question is uh, now that side you make the associated or corresponding diagram or corresponding curve little bit shifted and choose what will be the equilibrium. For this particular case this was the equilibrium price earlier. Now, due to sudden heat wave this is the equilibrium price. So, what is happening? Both equilibrium price is going up from this level to that level, equilibrium quantity also going up from this level to that level. Okay. Alternatively, suppose something is happening, this is the supply curve as it is, but demand curve is if this was supply curve, demand curve was d1 here, d2 here. Demand curve shifted leftward. So, as a result, initial equilibrium price was this much, equilibrium quantity this much. Now, equilibrium price is this much, equilibrium quantity is this much, this is equilibrium quantity, this is equilibrium price, new equilibrium price. So, you will see that the book we are following at the end there is a table, that table to summarize depending on the how much movement of demand curve and supply curve, which direction that movement, okay, what will be the implication over the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. The message is that nothing to memorize that thing you can do on your own without try, trying to memorize that. Just whatever the situation is there, try to replicate that in the demand curve supply curve. So, suppose, okay, suppose uh, is there is a major earthquake okay, and this commodity is say, say, still commodity is ice cream. So, what will happen? Due to major earthquake and there is no other apparent changes are there in the surrounding. So, demand curve as it was, it will be that kind. But because of earthquake, what happened sudden I, uh, some of the existing ice cream factories may be destroyed because buildings have been collapsed and all those things. So, as a result earlier supply curve was this kind, supply curve may shift leftward right, this side leftward or that side also you can think of how you will, you will uh, interpret that. This side means at this price at the at some given price level earlier this much quantity supplied could be there now only this much quantity supplied is there because lot of the factories have been destroyed due to this earthquake ok. Sometimes cyclone natural calamity cyclone is there right due to that say some sugar orchards no those are destroyed ok. So, essential ingredient to the sugar factory uh, supply shortage is there as a result sugar production will be affected. So, the point is what is happening in the surrounding in the real life in the in the atmosphere depending on that you have to decide which of these two demand curve and supply curve will be affected then which direction it will be affected it can affect it right hand side left hand side also or right word left word ok in that way and then certain things sometimes it can happen this is demand curve this is supply curve say d 1 s 1 demand curve is shifting upward rightward, supply curve also is shifting rightward. So, earlier equilibrium was this is d 1, this is d 2. So, d 1 s 1. So, earlier equilibrium was here, new equilibrium is here. So, if both demand curve and supply curve rightward shift, definitely equilibrium quantity will increase for sure, but equilibrium price whether will increase or fall that depends on relative extent of shifting of the two curves right. So, keeping all these things in mind alternative you can do all these kinds of alternative trial and error and alternative kinds of diagrams and as a result you can see whether this kind of cases now. Say suppose this was the demand supply. So, demand curve is shifting huge, but supply curve also shifting rightward but little bit less. So, what will happen? Initially, this was the equilibrium, now this is the equilibrium. So, quantity definitely will increase. In this particular case, price is increasing. Alternatively, if demand curve is uh, demand curve is shifting little bit, but supply curve is shifting huge relative to the demand curve shift. Equilibrium quantity is shifting right or no doubt, but equilibrium price is falling now. Okay? So, that depends on relative shift of supply curve and demand curve.
ok. So, these things you can do which direction which curve if shifts what will be the implication of the demand curve and supply curve. So, in our next lecture we will discuss another new concepts called elasticity of demand ok. Let us stop here and take care.